I'm so glad to see you all here today, uh, those who are, and those who are joining us online. Um, my name is Mother Ann Schneer. I'm the principal church. And of course, the people in the pews know that already, but if you're joining us online, that is who I am. I thank you all so much for joining us in our hybrid worship, which joins in-person um, in worship with online worship. Uh, for those of you who are here in the pews, you have your paper bulletins. Uh, and those of you online, we will have a bulletin uh, on the screen for you to follow along. Thank you again for joining us. Um, uh, Matthew has my phone, and I'll, I'll ask him uh, if he's able to share the feed uh, once we begin. And I invite you to share your feed if you're watching online, so that uh, we can do a little bit, bit of low-key evangelism uh, as we worship together. Uh, thank you again once more, and we will begin with um, a prelude that is played by Randy Turpin. Our, our organ is having an electrical part, uh, so we have a piano prelude today instead. So thank you very much, Randy. <laughs> God and our neighbor. You may stand or kneel as you prefer. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, your ways. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive us. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for men. Alleluia. We will praise of the mighty together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. He is of the dry land. Come, let us bow down and, bend and kneel before the Lord our neighbor. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We may be seated as we pray the psalm together. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my rising up from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places with all my ways. Indeed, there is now but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such 
knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. Raise my bed, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reading from the book, Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. He put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on. The Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac, and on which you lie to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, The Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, Awesome is this place. This is God. And this is the gate of heaven. In the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and pray Canticle 11 together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, but over you the Lord will arise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will, never, they will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the second reading. A lesson from Romans. 
scriptures, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will not die. By the Spirit, you put to death the deed of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. Where we cry, Allah, Father, that very spirit, hearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we so that we may be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of the present time worth comparing with the glory that be revealed to us and waits with eager longing revealing of the children of God. The creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own, of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage today and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Yourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we the redemption of our bodies. For in hope, hope we were, were saved. Now hope that is seen is not. If we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the canticle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. He shall be called the prophet of the Lord, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our in peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and began to blossom, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the house said to him, Master, did you not sow? good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, 
An enemy has a slave said to him, Do what you want to us, and go gather them. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let us both of them grow together until the harvest. At the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples were saying, The good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the king, the weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy is so them. The harvest is, is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil rulers, and they will rest of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and then it gets out of control, and now I'm already, it's already too late, it seems. <laughs> uh, and if any of you have been to visit my house, uh, you know that I've been complaining about these uh, things. They're called trees of heaven. They look like walnut trees that are growing, and they're very invasive, uh, and they're very hard to kill. They're really hardy. And, and the challenge always is how to get rid of that stuff without killing the good stuff. And the farmer, in our parable, is having that same dilemma. And so his solution is to wait until the harvest where he can just cut it all down on the wheat's schedule. So he's not damaging the wheat before it matures. And then he can have his servants separate it all out have a pile of wheat that is good and have the opportunity to grow well. And then the weeds that are obvious at that point, because uh, it, it, by that age, it'll be clear that it's not, um, that they are wheat, then they can be destroyed. And we have this parable for us to try to demonstrate why God is waiting. Think about all of the psalms that we have heard that say, How long, O oh Lord? How long? Why do you delay? Why don't you just come down and fix everything? And I don't know about you, but I have, have asked that question myself at times. And it's a comfort a bit to know that that is not a new question. That even in Jesus' day, people then were asking, How long, O oh Lord? How long? Why are you waiting? What's the holdup? Why do you delay? And Jesus offers this parable to us to explain that God is waiting out of love. Because at this time, if God were to come in and fix, fix everything, there's no way that, that the, the good and the bad would be able to be separated properly. There'd be no way to extract the bad without damaging the good. And so there's that lesson there about God's time versus our impatience. But, I don't know about you, but as someone who's heard this parable, a parable over and over growing up, I always seem to walk away with the wrong impression, the wrong lesson. Because, am I alone in the room when I was reading this? Did you start to think, well, I'm glad I'm weak. Were you starting to wonder? Were you starting to look around? Maybe not in this room, because you know we're all here, right? And the people online, you're at least tuning in, right? But you ever start to look around the world and say, well, I'm glad I'm not weedy like that. When we're talking about people being people of God, children of God, and children of the evil one, you start to make a list in your head. You start to wonder at which list are you on, and even more importantly, in that moment, in your thoughts, what list are they on? Where they are? And of course, that's entirely not the point. If that was the point, then Jesus would have told this parable and made some way for the wheat to be able to discern against the weeds, right? But that's not wheat's job. Wheat's job is to be wheat. And who is the wheat in this parable? Well, we hope that it's us, right? So our job is not to look around and say, well, they're weeds. I can't wait to see them get pulled up and burned in fire. Our job is to grow. Our job is to drink in the sunlight and the rain and to bear fruit. Unless we get too excited about how glad we are to be wheat, we have this other story about Jacob's ladder that reminds us also of God's presence with us all the time. But we can miss a lot of the lesson there if we think that Jacob is this wonderful hero. We've spent the last few weeks hearing about Jacob, Last week we heard about how he, he bought Esau, his older brother, his older twin brother's birthright. Of course, the takeaway from that lesson, the last line is, thus Esau despised his birthright. But you know what? Jacob 
saw his brother was starving to death because he'd been out in the field too long. And rather than feed him because he was hungry and he was his brother, he sold, or he, he, he basically sold the soup that he made for the cost of Esau's birthright. Now, is that the right thing to do? No. Now, Esau shouldn't have sold his birthright for the, for the stew. Yes, that's right. But we're seeing that Jacob has been wheeling and dealing and scheming already. In fact, the reason that he is running away from home is not even because of the whole stewed incident, but because he tricked his blind father into giving himself the, 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 uh, the paternal blessing that belonged to Esau. You may remember that story, that Jacob, at the urging of his mother, actually put on animal skins to make him a, a feel more like his hairy brother Esau, so that his father would give him the blessing. Because the poor guy was blind. And he said, boy, you sure sound like Jacob. And Jacob's like, oh, no, no, I'm Esau. Here, feel. I'm so hairy. Like, guys, this is not a good guy. <laughs> or he's not a good guy in the way that we like to think. Because people are far more complex than that. And so Jacob is running away because Esau wants to kill him. Because he kept doing all of these tricks. It's almost like Thor and Loki, you know, fighting. <laughs> but except here we're following Loki as he runs away because he's just played one too many pranks. And so Jacob is running away. He's going to go try to find a wife in his mother's land and, and curry some new favor with his father. And he has this vision. And poor Jacob, he walks away, I think, with the wrong takeaway again because his takeaway is, wow, I stumbled into the holiest place ever. This is the place where heaven and earth touch. This is amazing. I better put a rock here and pour some oil on it and pray over it and make this holy. Rather than understanding that God has been with him the whole time. He may have fallen asleep somewhere else that may have had that same vision. But he didn't stumble into some magical portal. But God has been accompanying him on this entire journey, that God knew him before, knows him now, and knows him going forward into the future. So our lesson, as we see these two readings intersect, can also be, it's not as simple as we are good guys, we are wheat, they are bad guys, they are weeds. We ought to remember that there are days when we are doing well, when we are doing God's good will, when we are being wheat. And there are other days when we just can't be bothered. When, when it comes to, to feeding the hungry, or maybe doing something that is for someone else's benefit that inconveniences us, or going out of our way to help someone, that we would rather just not. But there are days when we are plenty weedy. And that God loves us anyway. And that maybe we need to be a little slower to judge what is in someone else's heart. Because at the end of the day, we are creations. We are products. We are are lovingly made, but we are still made. We are not the boss. God is. And God, I think, never once has said, make sure that you judge those other people. Make sure that before you help someone, you know that they deserve it. Make sure that you remember your special place in this world, exclusive of them. Now, God keeps telling us over and over, love your enemy. Love the whole world. God sent Jesus Christ to die for all of humanity, not just the good ones. Because guess what? If it was just the good ones, 
we wouldn't be in that category either. Jesus died for all people. So as we go through our world, sharing God's love should be our first priority. That we go and we be we, we wheat. We bear fruit. We share love. What, does, what do weeds do that make them so undesirable? Well, they steal nutrients. They choke out other plants. They assert their dominance, their will on others. Now that's getting a little philosophical, but think about why we don't like weeds. It's not just that they're ugly. It's, a, it's hard to get rid of them. I have a holly bush that I was really excited about when I first moved to our, our home on Cosmopolitan. And as I was starting to try to get to know my garden that had been so beautifully and carefully cultivated by the previous owner, I started to see where the weeds were, and I was pretty good at pulling them off, you know, pulling them up in the, in, in the beginning. And then I fell behind, and then I didn't know what was what. But those trees of heaven that are so invasive that every year they come up, and I don't know if they're trees of heaven or something that I want to keep. There was one tree of heaven that I knew didn't belong there because it was growing up in the middle of my holly bush. And so for years, because I didn't want to poison the, the tree of heaven, I cut it down as far as I could very carefully, tenderly reaching in to the holly bush. And if there are gardeners in the room that you may be inter internally laughing at me because you, my technique was so awful, I probably was doing it wrong. But as I consulted people and I said, what do you do about these things? And they said, well, poison, you gotta get around it. But I really didn't want to do that. I was trying to find another way. I spent hours, uh, not by my Hollywood, but other places, digging out the roots, exposing them. Because I knew if you, I read online, if you didn't get the whole root, then they would just come back more next year. Well, I've taken too long and I'm ready to resort to poison and my holly bush is dying. Because no matter how many years I cut that tree of heaven down, it keeps coming back up in that same spot. And now my bush has a brown, you know, choked out, sad uh, leaves in the middle, and it's green around the edges. It may still be able to be saved. And someone uh, grabbed me after the 8 o'clock service and they said, let's talk about that holly bush. I might be able to help you. I said, yes! <laughs> but... The reason that tree of heaven is a problem is because it's stealing from the, the holly bush. It's choking it out. It's killing it. And that's what we want to not do. We need to be a force for good in this world. And that means there will be times that we step back because to assert our will chokes out someone else's growth. There may be times that we inconvenience ourselves. Now everybody here, except for me at the moment, is wearing a mask. And I remind myself and others that we don't wear the mask to protect ourselves because they're not, not as effective at protecting ourselves. We're wearing masks to protect other people so that we are not breathing whatever we have on others. That is why we do it. When I go to the grocery store, I walk around in my mask, feeling like the people not wearing the mask are looking at me like, oh, she's such a scaredy cat. And I feel like I want to like, make a t-shirt that says, I'm not wearing a mask because I'm scared. I'm wearing a mask because I love you. <laughs> I'm protecting you. I try to say prayers for people as I walk through. And I only am successful about the first 20% of my shopping trip. And then I get distracted and frustrated. But being weak means that we are also not always pushing our agenda, not always pushing our, our opinion. Sometimes we need to hold back and grow straight up. <laughs> so as we go into the world, let us remember to do what God has told us to do. And let God do what God has said God will do.
to take the time to grow ourselves and let God handle the other people. Let God remind us where we belong and what our work is. That work is to be loving, joyfully giving, praying, forgiving, all of those things. As we do that, we can see this garden that is the world grow. We can let God handle the rest. And if we can be compassionate toward the people that we think are weeds, we may find a new layer of compassion to turn even on ourselves for those times that we ourselves are weed. That might help foster growth in a way that we weren't expecting. So let's go out there and grow and nurture others. Remember that we are loved and do everything that we can to show that love to the rest of the world. Amen. I invite the people to please stand if you're able. And together let us proclaim the words of our common faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages, eh? Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let the way be known upon earth. Thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness, and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, by your grace you have called us in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our standing committee, our clergy, and all our people. Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your Spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your Son and grant that we may show the power of your love to all among whom we live. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, 
by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our parish prayer list we pray for Dolores, Joe, Susan, Suzanne, Mary, Mary Ellen, Lauren, David, Mary Ann, Jim, Lindsay, Sal, Robin, Dave, Debbie, Carlos, Julie, Judy, Chuck, Bob, Joey, Jeff, Ann, Katie, Casey, Sandra, Nancy, Karen, Brittany, Alec, Kathy, Dana, Luke, Mike, Kimberly, and Sue. We pray for all who are ill, for their families and those who are caring for them. We pray for the residents and staff of our local nursing homes, hospices, and hospitals. We pray for all essential workers. We pray for our leaders, for our vestry, Anne, our rector, Tom and Wendy, our deacons, the standing committees of the dioceses of Western Michigan and Eastern Michigan, Gretchen, our governor, and Donald, our president. We pray for all who have died, especially Mark, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory. Please add your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 